in June 2010, 1974 Nobel Laureate in Economics Friedrich August von Hayek's book The Road to Serfdom became the best-selling book in Amazon.com, thus making it the fastest-selling book in the world at the time. In his famous book, first published in March 1944, Hayek warned the world about the economic policies being pursued and how they would inevitably lead to economic crisis, political turmoil, and eventually serfdom or a kind of slavery to gigantic government bureaucracies or dictatorships. Hayek and like-minded free market economists, who are oftentimes referred to as the Austrian School of Economics, predicted the Great Depression of the 1930s, the fall of the Soviet Union, and the global economic crises we currently find ourselves in. While studying medicine at Duke University, Dr. Ron Paul stumbled upon Hayek's The Road to Serfdom and the works of other prominent free market economists like Ludwig von Mises and Murray N. Rothbard. Armed with their wisdom, Dr. Paul could clearly see how governments were making the wrong decisions based on flawed economic principles, and his presidential runs of 2008 and 2012 are helping bring the proper understanding of free market capitalism as provided by the Austrian school economists to millions. As interesting as the so-called Ron Paul revolution and its impact on American politics is, America, and in many ways the entire world, is about to undergo an intellectual revolution that will likely prove to be even more profound than the one started by Charles Darwin's discovery of evolution. And in some ways it can be said that this intellectual revolution is simply a continuation of the one Darwin helped launch over 150 years ago. It is an intellectual revolution about the single law of nature that creates everything around us, both the biological world as well as the socioeconomic one, that law being natural selection. Thanks in large part to the presidential runs of Ron Paul, as the global economic situation continues to deteriorate and more and more people and scholars find the correct understanding of economics in the works of the Austrian school economists, the more people will inevitably stumble upon the evolutionary ideas of Friedrich Hayek. Although Hayek might best be known for his classic book and being a Nobel Prize winning economist, he was much more than that. Perhaps no other human being has pieced together as coherent an understanding of the world as he has thus making him one of the greatest intellectuals mankind has yet to produce. If mankind is to overcome its socioeconomic problems and reach its full potential of peace and increasing prosperity, it must stumble upon Hayek and like-minded thinkers just as surely as mankind had to stumble upon an understanding of bacteria in order to cure disease. The essence of a Hayekian worldview can be summed up with the following words Hayek wrote. We understand now that all enduring structures above the level of the simplest atoms and up to the brain and society are the results of and can be explained only in terms of processes of selective evolution. The task of a Hayekian worldview is to provide the layperson or motivated high school student with the necessary knowledge needed to fully comprehend Hayek's quote and thus fully understand how natural selection and processes of selective evolution are the keys to understanding how the world works. After the introductory chapter, the book's second chapter briefly discusses how natural selection invented the mechanism of biological evolution and genetics as a way of creating biological orders and what we refer to as living things. The third chapter explains how natural selection invented what economists refer to as the market process and how the market process via things like money, prices, interest rates, and competition creates the socioeconomic order or what British philosopher Herbert Spencer referred to as the social organism. The fourth chapter discusses how natural selection has shaped and evolved things like our culture, laws, and religion, and just as importantly, how their evolution is intertwined with the evolution of the market process and the growth of the social order. Among many other things, the remaining chapters discuss the damage that government taxation, spending, and regulation does how to achieve greater prosperity by privatizing as much as possible, the damage done by the ever-growing environmentalist movement, important bits of history that greatly affect us to this very day, like World Wars I and II, as well as the creation of the modern state of Israel and the crucial importance of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The ninth chapter discusses race relations in the U.S. with a special focus on the rise, dominance, and impact of hip-hop culture. The history of mankind is full of episodes where the commonly accepted knowledge was wrong compared to what most of us know or accept as superior, right, or just today. Just a few hundred years ago, two ideas, one, that a woman should have the same rights as a man, 
and two, that it should be seen as wrong to enslave someone from a different group, race, or tribe, would have seemed ridiculous to most people living at the time and likely seen as recipes for social chaos. The last 100 years have brought mankind tremendous technological achievements, but our so-called experts and leaders still could not manage to prevent two huge world wars when it comes to economics. During the 20th century, millions were lured by socialist or communist ideology and inadvertently brought misery upon themselves. Socialism or communism did not spread and destroy much of the 20th century because of a few bad apples or tyrants. It first spread through the minds of the masses and intellectuals that then gave the future tyrants the moral and intellectual justification for their actions. As Friedrich Hayek tells us, it is necessary to realize that the sources of many of the most harmful agents in this world are often not evil men but high-minded idealists, and that in particular the foundations of totalitarian barbarism have been laid by honorable and well-meaning scholars who never recognized the offspring they produced. Contrary to what many people believe, mankind's problems have less to do with corrupt politicians or corporations or ill intent than with the fact that most people just do not understand economics and how the world really works. Ben Bernanke, America's top economist and head of the Federal Reserve, and the U.S. government establishment, although obviously not as wrong as those who preached communism were, are still as wrong about economics and as likely victims to following popular fads in their field as psychologists were when they said that homosexuality was a mental disorder, that masturbation would lead to insanity, and that black slaves wanting to flee captivity suffered from a mental disorder called drapetomia. The point of these last few sentences is to open up the reader's mind to the possibility that our commonly held beliefs, as well as those of our elected leaders and so-called experts, can be tremendously wrong as well. Have we reached a point where mankind will no longer undergo any more gigantic intellectual changes like the aforementioned two? The proper understanding of natural selection is the next big idea, which will cause us to look at many aspects of our current society with a kind of disgust similar to that which we now experience when we look at our less free past.